Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm at the Camping and Caravanning Club site at Sandringham in Norfolk, one of my favourite local haunts. And this behind me is the van I've come to test, the Rimor Evo 77 Plus, based on a Ford Transit. Now this could, just could, be one of the bargains of 2022. Now I use the word bargain with a slight hesitation because motorhome prices seem to have been skyrocketing. Blame Covid, blame Brexit, blame everything you like because prices generally have been shooting up but motorhome prices, well, they seem to be getting higher and higher. However, this Ford, this Ford Remor, 56 495, which doesn't sound bad value, does it? For a five berth, five travel seat, three and a half tonne motorhome. Especially as it's rather well equipped, but we'll come on to that in a minute. What I should tell you is that at time of filming in March, you can still buy one of these for this season, albeit later on in the summer. There are still some 2022 models available. Now, you may have missed those by the time you watch this film, in which case the 2023 model will look exactly the same, but will be priced at 59495 so another three grand if you miss the last of those 2022 models. The only extras on this vehicle are the automatic gearbox at £2,400 and the TV inside. Everything else that you see on it is standard, and you also get a Category 1 alarm system and a solar panel included in the price. Now, you don't get painted bumpers, but does it really matter? Especially as with the black wheel arches and these mouldings on the cab doors, it all seemed to flow quite neatly. And you get this chrome surround on the grille, so it doesn't look builder's van basic. No alloy wheels are standard, just these plastic wheel trims, but if you want alloy wheels, they're just under 900 pounds as an option. One of the very, very few options available on this van cab has central locking but that doesn't link to the habitation door you probably wouldn't expect it at this price but the habitation door you don't need an external step you've just got two internal steps and there is a fly screen on the door should have mentioned too the over cab sunroof that's standard as well the mains hook up here of course the habitation door stays on the continental side because this is well continental motorhome built in Italy down here you've got your um, drain for the waste tank, just a simple T-handle, nice and easy to use, just pull that out and your waste water just drops out. And when I had to drain it down the other day, it pours out so you won't be sitting at the uh, this grey water disposal point for hours and hours, as you are with some vans. Then, all quite neatly styled, it's quite a neat looking little van, isn't it? Of course, you don't get framed windows at this price level, then neither do you on the latest Swift Contiki that I looked at the other day. And then at the back here, unusual these, these locks on the external lockers, you just push them in hard um, to, to close them, push that little button when they're, once they're unlocked and then open. Now it's not a garage of course because this is a rear lounge layout, we've come on to the layout itself a bit later on. But you have got a lot of storage in there for what isn't a fixed bed motorhome and it goes right the way across with access on the other side as well. And then you've got the second loading door for that external locker. And these loading doors, when they're right the way round, they're magnetically held in that position so they don't blow back and hit you when you're loading up. Now in here we have got two additional cushions that help make up the fifth berth in the front Dinette. With those out, you have got a good sized space right the way across the vehicle. 650 millimetres high, loads of room for your outdoor chairs and tables, barbecue, all that sort of gear, if not bikes. Although you probably get a couple of folding bikes in there, no trouble at all. Can also get to the space from under the seats, so that's quite useful. And then in this corner, you've got your drain for the Trimmer Combi 4 boiler. So, really useful space especially for a rear lounge motorhome where often you haven't got much in the way of external storage at all. So, 
really like that. The only downside I did find is that this door does seem to be leaking very, very slightly. Um, I've spoken to M&C in Hull, the Remar importers, and they say not, not usually a problem, but uh, probably just a matter of adjustment. Maybe it's this, could even be that little tear in the, the rubber seal there, um, but not to worry, they will sort that. Um, just either adjustment or change the seal or something. Um, not a big issue. Then, moving along the side of the van, um, you've got, of course, your cassette toilet servicing hatch, your fresh water filler, very straightforward. Um, fresh water capacity is 85 litres, waste water 120. And then down here in an external compartment is your leisure battery. So inside this Evo 77 Plus, the first thing I'm going to show you is the rear lounge because, well, after all, Brit British motorhomers love rear lounges and this really is the reason you'll buy this model over other, others in the range or indeed motorhomes from other brands. It's a cosy space. It's big enough to relax in, but not, not huge. And it's got a sort of semi-private feel because the windows aren't huge either, especially in the back where you might expect the window to go right across the vehicle. It's a, a more modest size. Now, I actually quite like that because you've still got nice views out. You've still got the, the triple aspect in estate agent speak. Um, but you don't feel as if you're in a goldfish bowl. It's, it's a nice, comfortable place to be. And looking out at the pine trees and the blue sky, what a lovely place to be today. Upholstery comes in this um, sort of duotone finish with the sort of vinyl and fabric mix, which is oh, it's a popular thing to do these days. You've got neck curtains on the windows if you want a bit more privacy. Up to you. Concertina blinds and fly screens on the windows. Certainly wouldn't have expected those at this price level. The table, well here, unbelievably, this is it folded in half and it's still a really good size. Um, my wife and little boy were away in the van at the weekend and, well, we, I don't think we ever, un well, no, I know we didn't ever unfold the table. This is, this is a good size as it is. You've just got this single handle to release to twist it and slide it and move it about, do all the usual plenty of movement on there but you can also well we are at Sandringham after all so maybe the the Queen would pop in for a bit of roast swan and then for that royal banquet you can unfold the table and well gastronomic proportions I think is all you can say of this table and if you're thinking now that I'm trapped and uh, somebody else will have to bring me my dinner as some um, an experienced motorhome tester expects to be served. Well, actually not. In its giant form, press the handle rather and twist it. And you can still get out to get your dinner. Lighting is pretty good back here. Of course, generous daylight to come in through those windows in the day, even though you haven't got a skylight above. But you've got good artificial light as well. And although the seats are a little bit high, um, for sort of sitting upright, plenty of room to put your feet up. And that's really, I think, how you'd envisage using this space as a relaxing area. Um, at the weekend, we ate the front lounge and used this as the, the mum and dad reading space um, after little man had gone to bed. Um, I did mention earlier that you've got access under the seats to, to get to the um, sort of garage area if you like and you can get to it both on both through this panel under the rear seat here and over on the off side as well. Now bear in mind that this is under seven meters long and you've got a second comfortable seating area up front. It's quite impressive isn't it? I mean this is a good size family dining area. Again your table folds in half so it's not too bulky when you're traveling or when you just want to get from cab to lounge and 
and so forth. Slightly different um, locking mechanism. You've got a handle to pull down, but again, the, the table twists, slides, goes wherever you want it to be, really. Um, quite a nice size when it's folded. You can get it out, over to the side, out of the way. Also, when going from cab to living area, OK, there's a slight dome in the floor in the, between the front cab seats, but otherwise it's a flat floor right throughout the living area, which a lot of people will find quite a relief that they're not tripping over steps in the floor. Lots of light from the big overcab sunroof, and that winds open on a cranking handle. Good artificial lighting, too. A uh, little ceiling light in the drop-down bed above. LED strip lights top and bottom on these uh, top lockers. And plenty of room, oh, four or five people, to get around this table. When you're travelling, you can simply remove this side cushion and the base that supports it. And for the fifth travel seat, the inward facing seat over there, just the backrest comes round and turns from a side facing seat into a rear facing seat with a lap belt. Of course, the forward facing two passengers here, um, they get uh, lap and diagonal belts, but the rear facing, the fifth person, only a lap belt. But at least it is a true five berth motorhome, five beds, five travel seats. And also, that side facing seat on site with the headrest against the wall is actually a very comfortable place to sit. My little boy um, chose that as, as the best place to sit to watch telly, and the telly is back over the top of the fridge. Now, TV can comfortably be watched from the beds at either end. You can just turn it which, whichever way. Um, can be also watched from the cab seats, but not really from the rear lounge. So rear lounge is your quiet space for relaxing, front lounge if you want to watch TV. So this is the side seat in its lounge position, and you can see it's a comfortable place to be with this head restraint behind your headrest behind you. Then, if you need to carry a fifth passenger, just remove that, release these backrest clips, turn the seat around. And there's your rear-facing passenger seat. You'd need to sit into the corner a bit to get any protection from this headrest, head restraint here. Um, and I can't say it's somewhere I'd want to sit for travelling long distance facing backwards, although you have got clear view straight through to the back window, and you could probably see a tiny bit through the window and the door and the lounge window opposite, but it um, depends really how well you travel when you're facing backwards if you happy to do so on a train or something, then maybe you'll be OK here as well. And of course, just the lap belt. Finally, I should mention that um, there is some storage under that seat, despite the intrusion of the gas locker. And you can see the steel frame for the seat belts in there as well, which is reassuring, although it's just a lap belt. Over on the other side, of course, you've got access to your fresh water tank, which being inboard is in a nice winterised position. I think I can read your minds because, well, we're in a seven metre motorhome, it's got two lounge areas and it's budget priced. So, well, the kitchen's going to be small and it's going to be rubbish, isn't it? Well, actually, no. I'm really impressed with this. You've got a decent amount of worktop, you've got a three burner hob, the sink's fairly normal, but it's got a nice large drain outlet so it won't get locked the moment something goes down there. You've got this really good sized fridge. Um, just check the capacity, it's 141 litres, 141 litre fridge. It's got automatic energy selection and the best bit I like best is you've got a separate bottle drawer so if you just want to get the milk or something you don't have to be fumbling around, it's, it's there separately. Kitchen drawers, well I always like a kitchen with more drawer space than cupboards, and 
Well, there's no fancy electronic central locking of the drawers, but just much simpler. A nice little press button, and then these two large drawers lock and unlock. The top one, really good size for utensils, cutlery, and then the bottom one, not only is it a good size for your pots and pans and so on, it even has a little secret compartment at the bottom which um, you just remove a trap door. Perfect for keeping um, some valuable stuff hidden away. This isn't drawer space, but it's a really good size cupboard and you've got your gas uh, shut off uh, shut off taps in there as well. Top lockers are a good size too and everything feels nicely made. Got these hidden catches underneath, good lighting with separate strip light for the kitchen. Main sockets, well you've got three in the living area and M and C so you can have those bespoke to where you want them. In this van you've got one by the front lounge one at floor level in the rear lounge and one in the kitchen and USBs as well in the front and rear lounge areas. Yeah, what a great little kitchen. Ah, oh, you're saying you've just got a hop, haven't you? Well, can't live on pasta all the time. Where, where am I going to do my roast dinner? Where am I going to heat up my pizza? Well, ah, surprised you, haven't I? Because you've got an oven as well over on this side underneath the wardrobe. Now, the only thing you can criticise is that that is just an oven. It hasn't got a grill as well. And now, I think it's time for my coffee. While we're on the negatives, I should also mention that the Truma Combi is a gas only one, so you might use a little more gas than if you were, if you had the gas and electric boiler. But, well, this is an affordable motorhome, and I'm sure you can afford a little bit more gas. Just fit refillable cylinders, and that'll save you. And also, if you camp wild, or if you're camping on rally fields and farm sites and so on, you may not have access to hook up anyway. So for some people, it won't be too much of an issue. Back over here with the oven, underneath that, you've got a good size cupboard. In fact, it, I got both my camera bags in there. And above that, surprisingly large wardrobe as well. Then, before we come to the washroom, I do rather like this padded panel with the two magazine racks and coat hooks as well. Now, after some recent vans that didn't really quite live up to their new price tags, I'm struggling to find things I don't like in this Rimmel. And the washroom's not going to be where I'm going to start with things I don't like. For a start, it's a room of two rooms because you've got your toilet area when you first come in with the usual swivel cassette, an opening window, cupboard above for your toiletries, again with the usual, usual in this van, hidden catch underneath. So plenty of room in your toilet area, you've got rope hook, towel rail as well. And then separately you've got your wet area here with this bifold door, a good size wash base with plenty of worktop around it, really big mirror. Um, this nice, well, I think it's quite attractive. I'm probably not as practical as um, a nice plastic, as an all in one plastic finish, but this sort of marbly style wallpaper on the walls looks quite, quite attractive. And then when you lift out the false floor in the shower, you've got. 1.97 meters headroom in there. Pity about the little tiny shower drain, but once you put the cover back over the shower tray, it doesn't really matter if there's a little bit of water sitting in the bottom there. Once you drive off, it'll soon find its way into the waste tank. Then you've got this pull out shower hose for, well, for hosing yourself down. But you've also got something that I really didn't expect in a motome of this price. If you know somebody you don't like, get them to come and have a look at the washroom in this van and ask them what this bit does. Because when they fiddle with it, they're certainly going to find out. This is your rain shower. Really? A rain shower? 
in a sub 60 grand motorhome? Yes, and it's excellent. It really is excellent. Right, as you can see, the chip van's been to the campsite, so I don't have to cook tonight. But it does give me a chance to think, before I show you the beds, the last section of this video, what a great little van this is for, well, 59 grand, including the TV and the automatic gearbox. There can't be many other va vans that offer all this for that sort of money in 2022. Now, fish and chips was only eight quid, so I'm gonna enjoy it. Mm, perfect. So, to bedtime, and I've retrieved these two infill cushions from the under, under settee locker at the back. I did manage to get them out without going outside, lifting them up through the hatch in the bottom of the settee. But you'd probably only be able to do that if you hadn't got much other stuff stored in there. However, making the bed is pretty simple. You put your foot on the button underneath the table in order to lower it right down, unfold the tabletop, pull out this little section here and then the infill cushions simply go on top. Now as usual with this sort of bed there are joins but it's a good size bed, it's over two meters long and over a metre wide at that end. So, as this is the fifth berth, which a lot of people will never use, I suppose it's acceptable. I've seen worse. And as for cab blackout, you've got these thin cab curtains, but I don't really bother with those because you've got insulated screens that just sucker onto the glass and they're much more effective blackout. So, I don't know why they bother with these really. Most families will probably never make up that bed because if you just remove that headrest, press a button, and now you've got a drop down double bed, 1.92 meters, so good length by 1.15 meters. Not the widest bed, but it is a double. My little boy thought it was fantastic having this to himself. You've got twin reading lights at the head of the bed, enough headroom. If it's a hot night, you've got the overcab sunroof right next to you for ventilation. And you can still just about get out through the habitation door if you sort of bend and twist. What you can't do, however, very easily at least, is get into the washroom because the ladder clashes with the washroom door. So we just told my little boy that he was trapped for the night and that he had to shout if he needed to come down. And we moved the ladder to one side. Strangely, we have a net to stop you rolling out of bed this side, but no net that side. Um, and you'd have to be pretty adventurous in your sleep to fall down there, but yeah. If you worry about these sort of things, then worth knowing that you only have the net on one side. So where do mum and dad sleep? Well, there's no laborious making this lounge into a bed because, amazingly, you just press a button again and down comes mum and dad's double bed at the back. It's slightly larger than the front double bed, 1.97 metres long uh, by 1.16 metres wide. So still not the widest of double, but Katie and I slept very well in here. It's a comfy bed. Similar sort of headroom, perhaps a touch more than you get in um, a sort of Luton over cab. Great thing about both drop down beds is that there's room to leave duvet and pillows in situ. You don't have to find anywhere else to store those. So that's a great uh, plus when it comes to considering where everything is going to go for family motorhoming. And once again, you've got 
two reading lights. As I say, decent headroom, prime position for watching the telly if you want to watch telly in bed. Right, that's me. Good night. You've seen everything in the habitation area. Um, just before we go for a drive, let's look at these cab seats because unusually they don't match the habitation upholstery. They're finished in this sort of vinyl, very pale, almost white vinyl, which does seem to be wrinkling up a little bit already on the seats. Um, and they look smart enough. I'm slightly concerned about their long term just because of the pale colour. But um, moving on from that, let's see how this Ford compares on the road. So one thing of course that uh, differentiates the Rimor from some of its budget priced competition in the motorhome world is that it's on a Ford cab rather than a Fiat or sometimes a Peugeot in the UK. So what do we think of the Ford? Well, I'm a big fan. Um, yeah, it's a bit softer riding, so you do get a little bit of bounce sometimes on, um, on bad, badly surfaced roads and a little bit more lean. And driving across the open Fenland roads uh, at the weekend, I did also notice that uh, we were being buffeted by the crosswinds more than perhaps I would have been in, in some Fiat-based motorhomes. But all that said, the Ford has a much more comfortable, much more absorbent ride. I think it's got a much better driving position. You seem to sit lower, more car-like driving position. It's got a nice car, car-like steering wheel. Facier layout's all very straightforward, very easy to use. It even feels better quality than the Fiat, despite the, the recent Series 8 Fiat Ducato facelift. So, all in all, from the moment you sit in the cab, I think the Ford has an advantage. And then on the road, well, the Rimor comes with the 170 horsepower engine as standard, so you're certainly not short of performance. Um, some Ford-based motorhomes give you the 130 engine as standard, but as I say here, it's the 170. Um, the automatic gearbox, that is an optional extra, um, about two and a half grand, so about 500 pounds cheaper than Typically, you pay for an automatic gearbox on a Fiat. Um, it's a six-speed box, so not as many ratios as you get with the, the Ducato, but it's very smooth. Um, really, nothing to fault with the automatic gearbox. I would pick that every single time. What else can I say? Well, the twin lens door mirrors give you a good view aft. You've got the reversing camera that's permanently on, giving you your rear view instead of a mirror in that in that position. No fancy big display for sat nav or the radio or anything, although you do get DAB radio as standard. Um, you get this little phone holder too. But the thing I like most of all is just listen. It's quiet. The engine is smooth and refined and there's almost no conversion noise coming from the living area. And that, on a budget priced motorhome, I think is something to celebrate. Um, some motorhomes I've driven recently are really, really quite clattery and, uh, well, would certainly drive me mad on a long journey or, or on country roads, but this Rimor is very, very quiet indeed. So, my final verdict on this Remor Evo 77 Plus. Well, I like the Ford cab. It's just got a smoother, more absorbent ride than most Fiat's and Peugeot's. And the automatic box is just the icing on the cake. But on the road, the thing I really like is the lack of rattles. On sight, I love the fact there's no bed making. Well, unless you need the fifth berth, because you've got two drop-down doubles in a van that's only seven metres long. The washroom's excellent, the kitchen's great with storage, the 
big fridge freezer, oven as standard. In fact, the spec is excellent for the money. And I could even say that it's remarkable value. Or do I mean remarkable value? And I just want to finish with a second opinion from a new colleague that I've been training in the art of motorhome road testing. Reuben? I think it's good. As good as one of these biscuits. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.